Hi, Christy Knickerbocker here with Ah Tempo Voice Center for your Tip Tuesday. Hey SLPs and singers, listen up. If you've ever heard of vocal function exercises, which have been a staple in our field since Joe Stemple first introduced them in 1994, you've probably had somebody recommend them to you. But have you ever wondered if you can modify them and still have the same great effect on your vocal cords? What if you wanted to do less semi-occlusion? Would changing to an ah vowel be harmful to your voice box? Joe Stemple, Richard Andrietta, Dan Croak, Rishali Angadi, Megan Brown, and Maria Bain all decided to get together for a 2019 study to ask a couple questions. They looked at people with no voice disorders. Original vocal function exercises were completed as you can see here. These start on the F above middle C for females for the E and the F below middle C for males on the E and then starting on middle C for the stair stepped ooze for females and starting on the C below middle C for males. So why the weird mouth postures? Well, that's semi-occlusion. Semi-occluded vocal tract exercises actually partially occlude the vocal tract, which is the space from your vocal cords all the way to your mouth. Think about it like the sound source being slappy things together and then the tube that modifies what that sound source is as it comes out. The semi-occlusion keeps the vocal cords slightly separated and when the vocal cords are parallel, it improves vocal efficiency and vocal economy. This is because of a buildup of intraoral positive pressure. They had people practice vocal function exercises for six weeks every single day. One group did traditional vocal function exercises with a semi-occlusion, like I demonstrated earlier in this video. The second group did a modified OO with that vowel for uh, exercises two through four, and an E at the beginning where there was no nasality, where it sounded kind of like this. E and OO, OO, and so on. The third group modified with, again, the E with no nasality, E, and then an ah, ah, for the glides, ah, and then the stair step five pitches with the ah as well. So what is the magic bullet for vocal function exercises? What is the ticket? The mechanism of change is semi-occlusion. You should know that the semi-occlusion is the active ingredient to vocal function exercises if this is something that you are being recommended or you are recommending to your patients. The ah, it caused no swelling, no redness, and no lesions. Sweet! It also resulted in the greatest maximum phonation time or the ability for you to hold out a note as long as you can. So consider this when you're prescribing this to your patient or for yourself. So if your patient's goal is this, you can probably feel pretty safe knowing that you're probably not gonna cause any harm or any hyperfunction. What happens after you stop the regimen? Well, if you don't use it, you lose it. After six weeks of not having done the regimen of exercises, everybody decreased the ability to hold out that note as long as they could. What if people have trouble with the semi-occluded vowel? Modifying it to O can be easier for some people to complete and may make the difference in if they're going to be doing the exercises on their own and feel confident doing so or not. Think singers versus non-singers, introverts versus extroverts. It all boils down to people feeling comfortable doing the task and if they know they can do it and if they're going to be making some sort of improvement. Make those judgment calls based on the person and their abilities. Remember, this study looked at non-disordered voices. Be careful when you're drawing general conclusions about your disordered patients. Researchers are awesome humans and we rely on them in the trenches of real life clinical practice.